this five minute geography lesson we're covering theme five element two causes of climate change so spit out that gum and find your revision guide i'm mr s and i'll be your five minute teacher we've already covered what climate change is and some of the evidence involved back in lesson 5.1 but we still haven't decided whether climate change is a natural or a man-made process could it be caused by both well let's find out i've got three bits of evidence for you to consider the Milankovitch cycle is our first one. It's classed as a natural factor. So it's split into three different elements. We've got eccentricity. So this is the idea that the Earth is not on a fixed orbit around the Sun. It's more elliptical, which means that at some points it's further away from the Sun, so it's going to be cooler, and at some points it's going to be closer to the Sun, which means it's going to be warmer. And that elliptical orbit is also not rigid. It doesn't move over around 100,000 to 400,000 years. The second one is obliquity, also known as the tilt. We know that the Earth spins on its axis, but the axis is not always in the same location relative to the Sun. So if I swap out my diagram, we've got the axis at right angles to the Sun, so the most intense direct sunlight is going to be at the equator. If that axis was to tilt, it now means that the sunlight is more on the Southern Hemisphere than the Southern Pole, and the northern pole and the northern hemisphere are getting less. The precession is also known as the wobble. So the axis doesn't stay in its same position, it orbits on its own little rotation as well. This means that the obliquity doesn't stay in the same place. It's not always in this case going to be in the southern hemisphere, it's going to flip. So if I swap out my diagram again, so you can see here the southern hemisphere is getting the sunlight, my axis is going to do a rotation and leave the northern hemisphere in the sunlight now. So this is the Milankovitch cycle, and it means that different areas of the Earth are getting more direct sunlight than others, and we're closer or further away from the sun as well. Right, evidence number two is the carbon cycle. Again, it's a human and a natural factor, as we've discussed from lesson one. So all living things are made up of carbon, and carbon moves and is stored through the environment both naturally and through man so if we consider the natural ones to start with we've got volcanoes volcanoes spew out ash which initially will produce global cooling because it's going to block out some sunlight but it's also putting out carbon from carbon dioxide from the vent and ashes carbon as well so eventually it will lead to more global warming we've also got animals breathing and when they breathe out they're producing carbon dioxide, which is going to go up into the atmosphere. Humans, well, we can always already see one of the bigger impacts. So we burn fossil fuels. So through industry or through transport, burn for, uh, for fuel. We also chop down trees. Trees are a store of carbon. So if we're chopping down more trees, we're going to reduce the potential for trees to store the carbon. So it's going to end up in the atmosphere. And then finally, we pastorally care, we, we farm animals, and animals produce methane when they burp, and methane is another greenhouse gas. Now this diagram is a simplified version of the carbon cycle. It doesn't include the inputs or the stores. We're only really looking at how carbon gets into the atmosphere. So finally, we've got the greenhouse gas effect, or the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse, again, is another natural process that mankind has altered. If we didn't have the greenhouse effect, our planet would be around minus 18 degrees, so there would be no life on our planet. The idea is that insulation, which is the energy coming from the sun, comes through the greenhouse layer, a shortwave radiation, it hits the ground and heats it. Some of it is bounced back off into space again, but the, the ground that stored that heat irradiates it back out, but it irradiates it as long wave energy and long wave energy has trouble getting through the greenhouse layer. That's good for us, usually, because it means it's gonna store that heat in the atmosphere and keep us warm. But when we keep adding carbon and methane and other greenhouse gases to this layer, it becomes thicker and harder for that long wave radiation to escape, which means that over time, it's gonna start getting warmer and warmer and warmer. So that is all the evidence for climate change. And that wraps up our five minute lesson. So hopefully you're not feeling as stuck as the long wave radiation in the atmosphere. Don't forget to try the try it now tasks, which are on the screen. Class dismissed.